Good morning. Welcome to Porterfield. We are all about loving and leading people into a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. And in a culture, once again, in America today, where there is a lot of racial tension and those kind of things seem to be elevated in the news a lot, we're here to proclaim there's one race, the human race, and we are all part of it. And that's why Christ came to demonstrate for us. He died for us all. And uh, so to me, this movie that we're going to be showing uh, toward the end of August and then a sermon series that we're going to be doing will absolutely be relevant in all of our lives in so many ways. Talks about the difference that Christ can make in our own lives personally, but then in a, a school system, in a community. This movie is based off of a true historical event that took place. And if you've not seen the movie, we encourage you. And even if you have seen it, come and watch it again. We're going to be showing it here at the end of August. We'll be hearing more about it. And then again, uh, we're going to be having a series of messages uh, that I believe will be a blessing and an encouragement to everyone that comes, but also a challenge to all of us in living out our faith and just seeing the truth of how Christ really can make a difference in our lives if we take him seriously and we want to obey him and follow him and put his teachings into practice. That's why we're here. We're here because as we're learning, we want to encourage other people to learn with us. And I can't think of a better way to start our worship gathering this morning than through the waters of baptism, a public profession of faith and belief in Jesus Christ. And it's for all ages. I'm so grateful for all of our volunteers and the ministry teams here that minister to people of all ages. And, and again, no matter what your background, nationality, anything, because we all have a background, we all have a story. But what's most important is the future that God has given us in Christ Jesus. He has made us one in him. And so that's why we focus on Christ and what we can be and what he wants us to be. And so we read after Christ died on the cross for our sins and, and rose again miraculously on that third day, doing something that nobody had ever done before, conquered death, proving that he truly is God in the flesh, our redeemer, our savior, our creator. He said that he was going to go back up into heaven, but then he would not leave us alone. He would not leave us comfortless, or he would not abandon us, but he would send his presence through his Holy Spirit into the world. And that's what we see working today around us in the world and in the lives of all of us who trust him and follow him. On the particular day that this promise had been prophesied about in the Old Testament and was fulfilled, we see it in the New Testament in Acts chapter 2. At the preaching of one of the Jewish followers of Jesus, Peter, who was proclaiming this now to the Jewish nation, that indeed Jesus is the Messiah, the awaited one, the anointed one that, that they had been studying and waiting for. And now Messiah had come, and he was fulfilling things in a way that they didn't quite fully grasp at the time. And this salvation was not only for the Jewish people, but it was for all people around the world, again, all nations, all peoples. And so as Peter began to teach, as he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, Christ's presence, was moving in power in the city that day, this is what he proclaimed. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ, literally meaning the Messiah, the anointed one, the one we've been waiting for. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. They were convicted. They, they, they begin to understand. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brothers, what should we do? And then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Repentance means to have a change of mind, a change of heart about God. Rather than being stubborn and resistant to him and following our own ideas about him, that we would be open to what he truly is teaching us about himself and the evidence of his work around us. And then we're willing to yield and submit our lives to Christ and to his spirit and to what God wants to do through us. That's what repentance is. It's being willing to change the direction and the path that we're on in our mindsets. And then to be baptized was to be filled with the Holy Spirit of Christ, baptized in his spirit. But an outward symbol of that is water baptism. And that's why he says to be baptized for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this is what I love and this is what we need to hear again here today. For this promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. 
we are still seeing this prophecy coming true today in the world. You're going to hear a little bit later about one of our local families who was called onto the mission field. We're all missionaries. We're all in the mission field, whether it's locally, nationally, internationally. But a local family here that accepted the call and went to Zambia, uh, Africa. And so he's going to be sharing. They're going to be sharing a little bit about the ministry there. But you're seeing evidence. Today, this worship gathering is a, is a testimony and a witness of Christ's Holy Spirit working in the world today and these prophecies being fulfilled. When we do this baptism, there's a beautiful picture that teaches us about trust and faith in Christ. As the individuals come into the water and they stand, it's symbolic of their life before they came to that moment to personally trust Christ as Savior. As they go under the water, it's, it's a symbolic... Uh, like a metaphor of just simply surrendering your life to Jesus, trusting him. And there's also a beautiful picture as they go under the water. It's symbolic of their life as it was before Christ came into their life. It's, it's now dead and, and buried and gone. And as they come up out of the water, it's sim a symbol of the new life that we have now with Christ's spirit in us. We're not made perfect in an instant, but we have been accepted and adopted and born into God's family through the work of his Holy Spirit, through Christ. And then the rest of our lives is a journey of faith as we learn to understand what that means and live it out and grow until all of his promises are fulfilled for us and in us. There's a lot of beautiful imagery in water baptism by immersion, and that's why we practice that here at Porterfield. Again, baptism in and of itself does not save anyone. Faith in Christ is what saves us. Jesus, he is our Savior. But this is a command that Jesus said that we are to do to show the work that he's doing in and through us. And it's to be a witness. So if you're here today and you've not trusted Christ as Savior, know that he loves you. He gave his life for you. He wants you to surrender your life, your will to him. And it can start at any age, never too young, never too old. Um, and we'll see a little bit of a reflection of that today. So having said all that, first today we have Taylor. Taylor's a young man who has been part of our children's ministry here and his family, and we're so grateful for his family and for all of them, and again, the volunteers here. And so I want you all to know, if you've taken a turn in the nursery or you've helped out with kid connections back there with Sunday school or a class or whatever it is, this is the fruit of your labors and parents. Uh, just thank you for your faithful witness to your kids and your family because we're all in this together. We are a partnership. So we want to come alongside family. So Taylor, we're thankful for your life and we're thankful for the courage that it takes for you to get up here in front of all these people and uh, to let them know what you are believing and trusting about Jesus. And I'm really thankful at such an early age you're making this decision on your own. So I'm going to ask you, do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you personally and rose again? And have you asked him to come into your life? You've asked him to forgive you. And do you want to live for him? Yes. All right. Then on profession of your faith and obedience to the Lord's command, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Next, we have Alexis. Okay, if you want to stand right here. She's not real tall, but adorable, yeah. <laughs> but I want everybody to get a look at you. Go ahead and stand on this step right here. So, Alexis, we're grateful for your life and your family. And uh, I know, again, it's taken a lot of courage even at your young age. But do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins yeah. and rose again? And do you want to uh, follow him now with your life? All right. Then on profession of your faith and obedience to the Lord's command, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And next we have Michaela. Again, we're just thankful for your life and for your family, and we've been praying for your mom and your dad and a lot of your family, and 
one of the things that you're learning at an early age is how Christ helps us, even when, when life gets tough and times get tough. He offers his presence and his strength and his support, and I'm thankful that you all are a part of the church family here that's trying to show his love and support for you. And I hope that's something you'll carry with you your whole life. So do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for you personally and that he rose again? And have you asked him to forgive you, come into your life, and do you want to live for him? Yes. All right. Then on profession of your faith and obedience to the Lord's command, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. She is full of enthusiasm, as all, all of them are. And then finally today, it's, it's always a, a privilege to baptize people at any age, but especially uh, young men and women, teenagers. And so we have KT coming today, and we really enjoyed having her and her family uh, be here at the church. I've seen you, KT, grow in your faith and in the friendships that you've developed here. And I just want you to know how much we appreciate you and the courage, again, that you're showing at this age uh, when it's not always easy uh, being at the age you're at to take a stand for Christ. And so I know that the Lord is pleased with your stand. And I want to ask you to pray for all of these kids and all these families and especially to pray for KT and our uh, students that are going off to college this fall because we all get it. Uh, we live in a culture that uh, often is kind of... Uh, opposed, to say the least, uh, to some of our beliefs in Christ, but it's important. So I want you to know we're, we're supportive and proud of your decision, KT. So do you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins personally and rose again? Have you asked him to forgive you, to come into your life, and do you want to live for him? Yes. <laughs> All right. Then on profession of your faith and obedience to the Lord's command, I baptize you now in the name of the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So what a joy it is, and if you have not gone through the waters of baptism, I encourage you to do so. It is a command of Jesus that we're not saved by our works, we're saved by faith. By faith, we're also to be obedient and carry out what Christ wants us to do. And so this is one of the most important ways that we can begin our journey of being a public witness for Christ is to go through the waters of baptism publicly. Thank you for being here today and worshiping with us. And I pray that you'll continue to be encouraged now as we worship the Lord.